TV. I'm Executive Editor Michael Johnson. I'm joined today by James Meeks, the CEO and President of Move Systems. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Michael. And we're having you in because um, uh, Melissa Mark Viverito, the uh, City Council Speaker, announced uh, earlier this month, or last month actually, the uh, new pilot program that you guys are launching um, to, to put 500 state-of-the-art eco-friendly food carts and vendors onto the streets. So tell us, wh what it, what's going on with this? Like, what, wh how, how did this come about? What's the, uh, what's, the, what's the thing here? What's these 500 vendors, they're gonna go out on the streets? Um, it seems like a big initiative. How did this happen? So to take a step back, anyone who spends time in Manhattan is always running into these food carts. There's actually 5,100 permitted food carts throughout New York City. And um, they're just a staple of, of the city. They're serving up to 1.2 million meals a day. And so I think the city absolutely needs them, especially when you get all of these people who are coming in from the outer boroughs or from the suburbs into Manhattan during the day. Without these food carts, I'm not quite sure how people would survive. They're great, tasty food. They're quick. And it's um, a really important source for the food supply of New York City. The problem is, is that these vendors are, are forced to work in unhealthy environments. Um, the food carts in the current technology are very heavy pollutants. And also with the way in which they're using the propane tank, they're unsafe as well. And so what Move Systems try to do is say, how can we fix this problem? How can we create a new energy solution that both is much safer and reduces emissions? Um, speaker Mark Viverito is a great advocate and always has been of small business owners and, and food vendors in particular. And I think she and Councilman Donovan Richards, who's the chair of the Environmental Protection Committee, recognize that these um, vendors could have a much better work environment and that the city streets could be much cleaner air to breathe if they um, look for other solutions. So they were excited about what Move System was trying to do and they pushed us to exchange 500 existing carts today from the old technology to our clean tech um, aspect and, and have carts that are quieter, um, you don't smell the sulfur when you walk by them, and produce healthier food for the city's population. Well, let's talk about the rollout of those 500 carts. How, how do we determine who gets to trade in their old carts for the new carts, and how did you go about that process of, uh, of locating people who wanted this? Right. So I think the first thing that we focused on were the disabled veteran community. I'm, I myself am a disabled veteran and was really excited to learn about New York's approach ever since 1890 to prevent, um, sorry, not prevent, to um, permit mm -hmm. people who were honorably discharged from the army and, and um, received a disability in their military service to actually have a food vending license. And so we wanted to target those people who, who served our nations first. And then from there we looked at the broader vending population and word of mouth has been spreading very, very fast and we had 250 signups um, within one month of our announcement. So we found that uh, vendors are really looking for this cleaner um, a healthier platform in order to run their small business. And we've had great success in um, getting into the broader vending community. And I think people are going to hear this at home, and they're going to think, you know, this, uh, this seems like this could be expensive. Is the city funding this uh, transition, or, or how is this being paid for? The city is not funding the, the transition. Um, we, are, we are taking that on financially ourselves, and we're trying to use our financial partners as an opportunity to be able to get these cards at no upfront cost to the vendors. So for the first 500, we didn't want there to be a financial burden for someone to switch from their existing uh, technology to the clean technology that we provided. Gotcha. Did they have to? Did they get any money back for their old carts that they're switching to, or did the city just take those and, and kind of dispose of them? Or? No, the city hasn't been involved in that. Okay. It, it, it's it, the vendor gets to choose what he or she wants to do with uh, their existing carts. We try to encourage them to scrap it so that the technology isn't being recycled in New York City or sold somewhere else. But it's up to the vendor to choose what they do with their with their own property. And and talking about the rollout some more, there's going to start hitting the streets sometime in the next month or so. Right. Um, the end of the month, roughly. That's yep. All right, great. And then, um, is there any like targeted areas? Is it just like you said, you're going to give them to you know obviously like um, disabled veterans and some other people. Were, were you targeting any specific areas in the city, or is it just anyone who wanted to get a food cart? And or is it mostly Manhattan? Is it mostly Brooklyn? We're, we're looking at all five boroughs okay. and, and to make sure that it's um, it's spread out equally. And um, we we've, we've been working primarily on a first come first serve basis. And so we um, people come in, they're they're interested about it, they're willing to try the new technology, and, and we support them with the platform. 
and then they'll be um, they'll be found throughout the city. So I'm hoping by by the fall you'll see. Um, several dozen, if not a hundred, of these food carts spread out. And within the next 12 months, we hope to get to the 500. And I mean, obviously you said there's 5,100 food carts around the city right now. There's 5,100 permits. Permits. So permits for the food carts, obviously. Um, and, and we'll see how many others are out there. <laughs> so Maybe. Exactly. So you're going to have to do 10 times as what you're doing right now as far as this pilot program. How, how do you scale this up? Is this a situation where you feel that you're going to need either the city to um, you know, force them to change out their carts or they're going to have to give some kind of financial incentive to do this? Or do you think this is something that you could just, you know, but by the fact that it's uh, more environmentally friendly, better for the workers, they're just going to end up doing it, um, you know, market that does what it will, and they're going to want these anyway. So far, we've seen the demand is, is pretty high. When you look at a, a move food cart versus some of the existing food carts, I think a lot of the consumers are going to demand a, a cleaner, self, safer, healthier option. Um, so I, I think the market will solve a lot of that. I, I think that the um, city is considering expanding the number of permits. And whether it's a move cart or someone else, I would just encourage to make sure that their, um, their expectations of clean technology come onto the streets. Um, I, I think for us, if what I, what I care most about is emissions reductions. So we created the technology and we feel really good about our technology, but we would encourage anyone with a food cart, even if they don't use our cart, to find a way to cut down on the generator uses that they have and, and to find other fuel sources that are less volatile than the ones they're using today. And I assume it's, some, you know, for the most people, it's probably logical to think that you know, um, eco-friendly food cart, one that runs in solar panels and other technology is going to be better than the propane tanks. Um, but let's, let's, let's discuss let's just the scale that like what right. how bad is it for these people is it is it like a, uh, is this like a dangerous work environment to work in these uh, food yeah. carts right now and 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 is it really that cuz i mean i think most people are going to sit back and think is like oh is it really that bad i mean obviously you don't want to breathe in like you know right. fumes but you, how big is the problem as far as the working in these uh, food carts right now and how big is the problem environmentally on the, on a grander scale so um, there's been two independent studies looking at this question, and what they've found is that if you take an existing food cart off the road and replace it with a move food cart, it's like taking 200 automobiles off the road in terms of reduction of nitrogen oxide. Um, and we reduce particulate matter by 90%, and we reduce carbon dioxide by about 60%. So what, what does that mean for the vendor? Well, asthma rates are extraordinarily high in New York City. Um, and what we want is cleaner air for what the vendor is breathing in. And frankly, what, what you're breathing in when you walk by these carts. I think anyone who's taken a stroll down Manhattan, just look at a cart. Well, first you'll hear it for a while away as a generator is running, yeah. really noise. And you'll see that generator will be covered in soot. And you can just imagine that that's essentially what is being pumped into the air that's next to the carts. Right now, the vendors don't have any other option. Um, but what we found is they're very happy to have an environment where instead of having here 14 hours of generator, they may be here one to two hours of generators because the solar power and the battery power is working for the rest of the time. And uh, they don't like breathing in those fumes as much as anybody else either. Great. Um, going forward, is there any pushback you see to this? I mean, the city council obviously is showing you support. Um, you know, have you worked with the mayor's office at all? Have they been uh, receptive to this idea as well? Have they been helping you too? Yeah, we've spoken to a number of people in, in the mayor's office and especially um, spent a lot of time with um, Commissioner Sutton, who's the head of Veterans Affairs for the, for the mayor. And um, the mayor seems, you know, the office seems very excited about the emissions reductions. They've just passed a clean air bill, very ambitious in terms of its emissions reductions. And I think the administration recognizes that this is some low-hanging fruit that um, move systems can help support in order to reduce um, a number of the emissions that they've been focusing on anyhow. So at this point, it's just basically um, outreach from the mayor's office and the city council. You're not looking for any legislation changes, or is there anything that you want to advocate on the city level to, to change the laws to help this um, kind of promote the uh, more environmental-friendly food cart? That I, I think just in general, we're looking for uh, standardized laws and standardized regulations. I think one of the things that we found that vendors are excited about working with Move Systems is oftentimes... Um, the rules are, are enforced sporadically, and the vendors are always nervous about whether another rule change will, will come from um, the Department of Health or Fire Department and whatnot. And, and I think working with Move Systems, we just try to create a consistent approach so that what we have found is the vendors know what the rules are, that they want to comply if there are commercially viable options for them. And so that's what we want to create is an environment of, of consistent rules, consistent regulations that focus on air quality, focus on public health, and focus on safety.
Great. James Meek, CEO and President of Move Systems. I think this is something that a lot of people are going to be very interested in looking for going forward. Thanks for coming in. Thanks so much.